I would like to call up uh, Nita Ziv, who is the director of Tel Aviv University's clinical law programs and, t and is the supervisor of the Human Rights Clinic here, and Efrat Tolkovsky of the Business School and the director of the Real Estate Institute. Come on up. to all of you. Um, thank you for inviting us. We, ha we have a third partner for this project, and she's sitting there. She doesn't want to come up and talk, but Galia Feit, Attorney Galia Feit, from the Mi Micro Business and Economic Justice Clinic. So um, our work is uh, addressing these issues from a little di different angle. Uh, the project was actually funded by the program, the Tel Aviv University Klal program. We got a, a kind of a, a initial grant, uh, which we'll tell you uh, about in a minute. Uh, but the, the focus of the project is institutional. Uh, what we tried to uh, investigate is to see uh, on the issue of pensions and long-term savings, who in the Israeli field um, are the actors that could uh, protect the interests of members of the pension funds and the savers. So we come from a perspective from, from the law clinics, uh, which are a program at the law school um, that uh, um, look at different ways in which the law could work to protect and to better the interests and the rights of the public and vulnerable populations. And in particular, the, our, our micro business and economic justice clinic uh, looks at the intersection between uh, the world of the financial world and the legal world uh, on the life span of people in terms of their work and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, the, and we, um, when we were working with our clients, uh, we also talked about savings. And I don't know, somehow we realized that long-term savings and retirement are also issues that we should start looking at. And uh, looked around us and saw that there was really no uh, civil society program that understands, that is interested in, that works in the area of pension and long-term savings. And so the raison d'etre of the project is really um, more, it's, it's more like an applied study uh, to see what can be done, what should be done, uh, given the tremendous changes that uh, this field has gone through in Israel in the last 15 years. So I'm sure that you're going to hear more about it tomorrow and probably even heard about it today, that uh, Israel has gone through a very uh, um, clear and quick process of privatization. This, you know, we could put this under the word of privatization clearly, uh, where our pensions and our long-term savings have moved from one sphere where they were largely uh, administered and run and under the responsibility of the trade unions and the government and the public sphere to the financial market. And um, understanding this, you know, uh, we were looking at questions of who is regulating it, who is advocating, who is providing the knowledge, who is taking care of our pensions and of our rights. So our, our inquiry, as I said, is mainly institutional. We did not invent any new data about what is going on. We were uh, uh, compiling all the information in this area. I think most of the people are sitting in this room <laughs> whose material we read. Uh, and, what? and used. Yes, and used. Uh, uh, of yes, Biva, Professor Spiegel, of course, uh, is at the Van Leer Institute and uh, and, uh, and others, um, and so so I won't um, 
go into the, in detail into the process of describing the privatization, it's already a given in our country uh, that our long-term savings, not only our pensions, but our other forms of savings, are now uh, sitting in the capital market, in the financial market. Uh, not just the administration of these monies have gone through a change, but actually the monies themselves have been taken into the capital, to the financial market, and in order to make our financial market more complex and more developed. Um, and so we ask the question of what needs to be done, who's doing it, who's not doing it, where, where are we lacking? So it's institutional kind of analysis. Um, so when we look at uh, what civil society is doing in the area of uh, pension schemes, uh, we identified very few actors, and I will go into them uh, in a minute. But we tried first to understand why. Uh, why is it that even though Israel has a very vibrant civil society in almost any area that you look at, there's a small organization that is involved, what is it in the issue of pension that uh, we see uh, hardly any uh, activity at, in civil society? Um, and I think uh, we identified mainly two, uh, two reasons. Uh, first is that traditionally Israeli civil society uh, is not used to working uh, with market actors, uh, except for maybe in the area of employment and consumers. But uh, you talk to the typical Israeli civil society uh, activist, and you ask him about um, questions of the financial market, Sagot, analyst, Chinese, you know, they don't know what this has to do with questions of social justice. Because when we talk about social justice, we either talk about uh, employers or we talk about the state, um, but we really don't see um, the market, and especially fi the financial market, as an arena where we can think about questions of social justice because it happens somewhere else. And it happens in a language and in terms which we really don't understand. Um, it's not the same people that do rights work or social justice work. It's a set of tools that they don't have. It's a language that they don't have. They don't understand it. I, d I don't before I started working on this, I didn't even know what nostro means, you know, in terms of how you invest and do, who invests, how you invest, your own funds, your, the beneficiaries, who are the regulators, you're talking different regulators. Most of the people come out, not of law school, but of, out of business school, and they don't go there. They go somewhere else. So um, we... Uh, we identified this uh, void um, both in terms of the agents as well as the subject matter. Uh, then we went to look into uh, who, who is doing what because there are a few actors that are doing some um, work in the area of pension scheme. And um, I won't go into them all, but... Uh, uh, some of them are NGOs that are dealing with workers' rights, and incidentally, when they deal with workers' rights, they also deal with pension rights, but very marginal. Um, there is one NGO, ADVA, that kind of does uh, um, monitoring and publications about what's going on. Of course, the Van Leer Institute has a project on pension and long-term savings, and a lot of material has been accumulated there. Uh, there's Lila Luria, one here around us that is doing two, almost two, right? <laughs> Lila is, is doing a PhD uh, in uh, advice and NGO. The Van Leer Institute is a uh, well, uh, research. research, independent research. 
we, we, we bumped across a few other. There's a, a bunch of high-tech people that uh, you know, have the Israeli Forum for Pension in Israel, and they're doing some advocacy work about the administration fees that uh, are very high. Um, and then there are a couple of other NGOs that are working with low-income people. And our, uh, one of them is doing information provision uh, consultation to the people who they're working with. And another is um, an, uh, a new, an organization, a workers' advocacy organization, that actually has a joint venture with one of the insurance companies in Israel that is offering its members a low-income pension. It's called Ma'an. I don't know if any of you know Ma'an. Um, Ma'an is, uh, an, um, I think they're called Workers' Action Committee or, or something like that. Uh, they, are, they're ha they have membership uh, working with uh, mainly in the Arab sector. Um, and they're organizing workers, and they have devised a scheme with Makefet uh, Tachadasha in order to provide them with, uh, with a good pension program. Uh, I'm going to maybe uh, pass this around if people want to see what they're doing. Man, man, makefet. So, um, so here and there, there is sporadic activity of social justice organizations that are dealing with pensions and long-term savings. Um, and we identified, basically, we identified. Uh, four directions which need to be developed in Israel. So our project is not just trying to give advice. We also want to do it. So we would like, if they're in, in the discussion, you know, we, we would like to help actually uh, set up certain programs in these directions. So, so the first is, uh, you know, we, we identified the issue of literacy, of the need to uh, educate people, um, from high school to university, we actually looked at all the programs at the academia uh, and uh, listed all the courses that are given um, in the business school, law school, and, and others, and there are very few. So in terms of teaching it, offering it to students, there aren't that many courses. There aren't that many people who are doing research or, or graduate work or advanced research. Uh, there aren't any centers except, you know, for, for, for this program. So, so one is really dissemination of information and literacy. Uh, the other is advocacy. There's really no uh, watchdog, pension watchdog, uh, that deals with our rights and our interests in the pension schemes and the pension funds. Uh, there, we have two or three consumer organizations in Israel, but they don't do financial consumer work. Um, they, you know, I was we were talking with them, and you know, they're all focused on the cellular companies and, and the cable TV, which are the really bad ones in Israel. Um, but when been looking at the financial market, they, they also, you know, it's hard enough to deal with Cellcom and Orange, you know, to deal with the uh, financial uh, services, and it's, it's hard. Um, and then we identified uh, the need for um, universal service provision, access to uh, knowledge and to, um, to, to, to pension funds and programs that exist. So there are some NGOs that do that. Vivat Mechet, for example, is, is an organization that deals with uh, women who are opening up businesses, so they actually help them and to hook up to certain programs so they would, as they open up their business, they, they would also have some kind of arrangement for, for long-term uh, savings. And then um, we identified the lack of accessible pension project, products for this part of the population that is not covered by the existing schemes. Um, uh, people who are under the income tax uh, level micro-businesses, micro-entrepreneurships, uh, there is no pension product, a good one, that they could buy. And we started looking at what the commercial um, 
insurance companies are offering, you know, for our uh, day workers, for our cleaners, for um, and it, it's not a good program. It's too expensive. It's cumbersome. You double pay. Uh, the it, it's very hard for me if I want to, to provide the person who's cleaning my house once a week a pension plan. It's not really worth it. So, so the market is not providing a good solution. So we identified the need uh, to create a new product, as if I said, a plain vanilla pension fund that uh, would be accessible to low-income uh, workers uh, and provide them with, uh, you know, the basic good uh, conditions for for pension and, uh, during retirement. So um, basically, our, our our report or our paper kind of outlines both the process, how we got here, who's doing what, and what needs to be done. And we actually st started looking into solutions, and um, if I, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what needs to be done in terms of the regulatory framework. This is what we, uh, we think. Oh, okay. I'm strong. You speak quite strong. I can, do, I can hold this one. Uh, okay, so the truth is that we I think we knew the, the conclusion at the beginning to start with, but the main issue that I think that we were uh, worrying about, um, we will not describe the pension because I know tomorrow the, 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 uh, I believe you're, you'll describe the reforms in the, in the, in the pension uh, in the pension system in Israel, but the main thing we, we, we kind of linked into was a, a major change that was enacted, uh, enacted in 2008, which uh, actually created an obligatory to put aside money for retirement. Even if you make nothing, zilch money, you have to put some money aside. It's quite, uh, I think, extraordinary law. Uh, no other law in Israel has any making so, such a huge demand for people to, to do something, and this is to put money aside and to give this money to pre-identified entities to manage it. It's not that I can put my money in my saving account at a state uh, regulated bank. No. I have to give someone, one of few actors in the market, and I know that they charge a lot of money for managing this money, and I know it will be very complicated for me to get my money back because I'll have to, have to stand for so many criteria for getting it back, and I, don't, I know that it will be very hard for me to follow up what I deserve to get back 20 years into the future, and I know that it will be so little money that I might say, okay, what the heck, or they wouldn't want to talk to me about it, and all of this, and still the state makes a law that I have to put this money aside. So it's kind of a... Uh, I read all, all the materials that you wrote on, and I think it's a good law, created badly, uh, tremendously badly. So we were, uh, we were trying to think what needs to be done now, given that it's, it's a law, maybe it's a progress, and somehow at least the, the state is willing to accept an increase in the cost of uh, employment. You know, usually they say, no, no, do not touch the cost of employment, right? So at least they are willing to accept the increase in the cost of employment. So let's make the facility of this pension better instead of fighting against the law, I think. So our, what we thought that the state should do is create a plain vanilla pension product, which means pension without any, I, I don't know, maybe it's for the civil society and people like uh, Mr. Spivak, Professor Spivak, to think about what should come with this plain vanilla pension, what kind of, uh, of uh, insurances that are, I don't know, because it, we moved from no pension into a pension with insurances that we don't know what they are, and we don't, you know, maybe it's, it's an unmarried woman and she's buying a pension and she's buying a, a, how do you call it, shirim? Shirim. Descendants. Descendant insurance without Everyone. knowing she's buying a descendant. Yeah, survivor's insurance without having children and she doesn't know she's buying it because nobody's managing this. It's not even a micro pension, it's a nano pension program. And uh, so that the state has to regulate 
regulate this specific plain vanilla pension product. It's a product with very much lower cost, management cost, by law. This is what we, we right? This is what we promote. And, uh, and, and, and other, other additional laws that, again, the civil society should be involved in the, in the discussion of what, how do you enforce this, uh, this uh, uh, enforce the, I don't know, the creation, or, or how do you enforce a regular pension fund managers to manage such a plain vanilla product, they might not want to, etc. So our main, uh, main conclusion is, is that, uh, is that we, we think that the country should enact such a, such an, a, should not manage the money, but create the infrastructure for that type of pension to be created. So while looking around the world, we thought maybe it's a stupid idea, maybe that stupid idea, and uh, maybe nobody, if nobody else around the world thought about it, so maybe we are totally wrong. And then we looked and we found out that in the UK, when they, they are kind of walking on the way of, of creating an obligatory pension, uh, pension uh, similar law that you are obligated to put aside money for pension, they created, a, uh, any, uh, the government gave money for an NGO to create an NGO, a lot of money, about a billion uh, sterling pound, British pound. It's called NEST program. And this money goes to a huge uh, computer program system that would be this specific type of pension. That's a plain vanilla pension that, uh, that, uh, that is which is the product for the obligatory pension, the low-income pension savers. So it's NEST, National Insurance, National Insurance Trust. Yeah. Which would be the pension program for this low, very low micro, uh, micro type of, of pensions. And, uh, and, um, and I thought that, we thought that the Israeli government should follow that. We, we went... Um, Okay. okay. We even went uh, all the way to Jerusalem, and I hope uh, the discussion wouldn't be uh, described over lunch, over dinner. But I think I thought I thought that we felt that Professor Oded Sarig wasn't so wasn't thinking about it. We, I had the feeling, knowing him as a, before that he was my uh, teacher, that he was thinking about such ideas, but people there told him that it's out of the question. He was mentioning even uh, him thinking about transferring this money to the to uh, Amitim, uh, the old pension fund, because they have a very low ca cost of management. So he thought that maybe the obligatory uh, pension money should go to Amitim, which is a nice and interesting idea, but uh, it seems to me that the finance ministry uh, disliked the idea. Um, okay, uh, I think uh, one, one, one uh, we, as we looked around the world, one, one, uh, yeah, we, we've looked around the world and tried to see what we, what we see around the world. Is there are there watchdogs, civil society watchdogs, looking over pension issues around the world? We found mostly in in UK, in the USA. We did a, we didn't travel to those countries. We did a internet-based research, so it could be that the language issue was the reason we found only such institutions in in English-speaking countries. I suspect that it's not only that. I suspect that uh, for, from reading the history of those specific institutions in the U.S. and the U.K., they, my, my suspect is something that relates to what, a little bit to what you've discussed, that those countries had corporate-level pension programs. When you have corporate-level pension programs and they are doing something wrong, those are the bad guys, and you can have an NGO fighting the bad guys. When the market does something wrong, there's no bad guys. It's very hard to create an NGO against the market. You know, you fight and there's nobody there. So I, this is my suspicion. And, and in Israel, the, the move was from the, the unions 
into the financial markets. Sort of uh, a move that doesn't create the, the regular evil that you can fight against and create NGOs uh, to fight them. And I think an, another one of the very interesting, uh, I thought, uh, I'm, I'm a, my PhD is in finance, so it was very interesting for me to see all these political processes into finance. The very interesting thing is when they did the part of, each time they talk about the reforms, they are talking about two main reasons the actual for reforms. is one, making sure that we have pension for those pensioners, and, one, and the other one, which is not much less important, to create a financial market. So they are taking my money to create financial market, and I'm being a PhD in finance, I know that what's an efficient market, I don't know what it is, so they are creating something that I don't really know what it is, but they are very generous with my money at it. So this is what I have to say. Uh, maybe just one more sentence. When we looked at uh, around uh, to see what programs there are, we found a lot on service, information, and advocacy. There are clinics in the United States, for example, that do litigation on behalf of investors and securities and so on. Uh, we didn't find NGOs or social businesses providing a uh, product that is accessible, except for Nest, which is new. Um, and we're open to ideas because we see ourselves as active researchers participating in whatever needs to be done. So, thanks. <laughs>